Almost exactly one year ago, I tried turning Houdini Corpse into an alternative to Adobe Substance. That kinda worked, but only with a ton of manual labor and a ton of custom tools. Turns out, I just should've waited a year, because in Houdini 21 pretty much all things I complained about are now fixed. Let's celebrate that with a new PBR texturing project. And what I want to texture today is this thing right here, which is called Detroit Agate. This is not a mineral, but layers of paint that accumulate in the painting booths of car shops. And while on the outside they aren't anything special, if you carve away at the surface, you reveal those paint layers underneath, getting really beautiful results there. Manu already created a video for this, detailing how to build a Detroit Agate asset to render in Karma. What I want to do today is to turn this into a sort of low poly asset with a ton of baked textures that we can easily import into something like Unreal, for example. This is my Houdini scene. I already built my Detroit Agate generator up here. This is pretty much based on Manu's tutorial, just with a couple of modern nodes in there. And then in here, I have a file cache and I've cached this out. And as attributes on there, we have a CD attribute as a sort of preview, but we want to care mostly about the distance attribute, which is how far we carved into this Detroit Agate and revealed those color layers. And I want to use this later in comps. For now, I want to build my low poly asset. So for this, let's use the quad remesher, which got some updates with Houdini 21. And while the default result looks already quite good, I ended up playing a bit with the adaptivity and alignment. And I used this very specific value for the alignment right here. And this very specific value for the curvature weight. Now to bring this into COPS, this also needs UV textures. And for this, we could use the new UV flatten from points node. However, using this, I had quite a lot of issues with overlapping UVs, which aren't good for what comes later in this video. So I ended up using my typical workflow, which looks something like this. I'm using a UV auto seam node to generate seam groups. And I played in here with the grain tolerance and the merge threshold a bit until it looked nice and produced no overlaps. Then this goes into a UV flatten node where we specify the seam group that is output by this node in here and in here. And then finally, this goes into a UV layout swap with the island rotation steps that are very small so that we can just get an efficient packing. And all in all, this leaves me with this UV map right here, which is not the cleanest, but again, worked nicely for me. And then before we can get this into COPS, one last thing that I want to do is also add normals to it. Let's wire this down and on a normals, set the cusp angle to 180 degrees like this. And let's end with a null and let's call this quad for a quad mesh. Now my plan for this is to take this low poly quad geometry that we generated here and bake all the high poly details that we have up here to it using the new baking workflow. So to do this, we have to do some more prep on a high poly geometry as well. And I'm just going to paste these nodes in here. This is just, again, a normal node with the cusp angle set to 180 degrees. This is also an attribute blur where I'm blurring both my color and my disk attribute with four iterations, which look nice in the end. And then again, it's a null for reference. And then with both these generated, we can finally drop down a cob network and get going on our baking. So for our baking, let's first of all bring in our geometries. Let's use sub import nodes for this. And this will first of all be my quad geometry and then also my HQ, my high quality geometry like this. And I want to bring in a baked geometry textures node. This is the new baking workflow with Houdini 21. And all I need to do in here is basically wire in my low poly geometry and my high poly geometry. I could also specify a cage match if I need more control. However, in this case, I did not find that necessary. And as soon as I click that, and as soon as I highlight the node, I get a big normal map. And as you can see, this is really fast and also the output looks quite good. So we should be fairly happy with the output of this node. There's a couple of other things that I want to enable in here. First of all, I want to enable boundary filling just to get rid of any artifacts around UV seams. And then, of course, I also want to bring in my dist attribute that I'm later going to use to shade my Detroit Agate object. So for this, we want to go down to custom attributes, click the plus icon here, and let's put in the attribute name dist, and this should already work. So if we now change the display down here to custom, yeah, we get our distance attribute as well. Now, for some reason, the boundary on this distance attribute is not filled in automatically. So we have to do this ourselves. So for this, I'm going to use a smooth fill node. 
And all I need to do in here is use the alpha as the fill area and my custom attribute as the source. And now it's filled in and we're good to go here. So finally, let's collect all the maps that we baked in a null. So this will be, of course, our normal map. Then we also already build an occlusion map because this already has a checkbox in here and you can activate other maps that you might need in here as well. But let's fire this in as well. And then of course we want a custom filled map in here. Let's give him some names. Let's first of all call the first one normal, then the second AO for ambient occlusion, and then the third one dist like this. And now let's finally preview them. Let's drop down a preview material cop. Let's first of all take in our low poly geometry and just wire this into the geo import of this node right here. And if we wire in our normal and then, for example, preview our base color in here, we should see this is already looking pretty good, especially if we change to smooth shading in here. This is looking a lot more detailed compared to our low poly mesh. And we can take a look around, look for issues. And we have one issue right here that we should fix. I tried solving this with the cage mesh, however, that did not work. But if we take a look at our quad geometry and at the wire shading, we can see that this is pretty much localized to this very odd looking face in here. So what I ended up doing to fix this is drop down a divide node, select this weird face in here and check don't generate slivers and avoid small angles to divide it into sort of equal looking triangles and wiring this into our output in here and taking a look at the bag again, now this is fixed. So you might want to solve this using a cage mesh, but also dividing faces up seems to work sometimes as well. Now back into COPS, we have our maps in here. So am I going to drag a lot of wires from here to every bit in my COPS network where I'm going to use this? No, of course not. Because now in Houdini 21, we actually have a fetch node in here, which pretty much acts like an object merge node in SOPS. So I can drop this down. I can wire in, I can drag in my null into the cop path. I can hit set outputs from selected cop. And now I have my normal, my AO and my distance in a separate node without wires going anywhere. And let's use this to build our Detroit Agitator. So to do that, I want to mimic Manu's old tutorial, which begins by taking the distance out here and using this as a position input into two noises. So let's drop down two fractal noises like this and like this. Let's wire the distance into the position for both of them. And on the first one, I don't want to change anything, but on the second one, I do want to add an offset of 1.5 in here. And then also turn down the element size to 0.02 in here, like this. Next for my upper fractal noise, I want to turn this into colors. So, so let's grab a monitor RGB node, drag this in and let's come up with a color ramp. I'm going to be lazy here and just use the Reridus preset like this. And for my lower one, I just want to remap this, make this more contrasty and just pull those two handles in here, sort of to the middle, something like this. And then finally, I want to multiply both these maps that I generated. So let's drop down a multiply node, wire it up like this, and let's turn down the mask a bit. And yes, yeah, something like this looks proper to me. So this is going to be the diffuse map of my new Detroit Agate material that I'm going to build in here. I can also easily tackle the normal by just taking my second fractal noise and putting this into a height to normal node. And this is pretty strong, so let's turn this down a bit. Let's turn this to 0.001 like this. And finally, of course, I also want a roughness texture for my material in here. And for this, I'm just going to load in a grunge map. So for this, I'm using a file node. My grunge map is this Liquid Stains 03 from CG Bookcase. And I want to import this as raw because this is a roughness map. Next, I can remap this. So let's drop down a remap node. I want to make this a little more subtle. And also let's set the mode in here to mono. And the output min should be 0 0.05. And the output max should be 0 0.2 like this. Now, while these maps up here fit our UV islands perfectly, this map down here, of course, doesn't because we just imported it. So to make it fit our UV islands, we should do something like triplanar mapping. And lo and behold, we now have a triplanar mapping node inside Copernicus without building this ourselves. So let's put this in. Let's wire in our text chain here into the text chain input. And to make this work, we need from our original geometry, a low poly mesh, we need a position and a world normal texture. This is something that we generated also in previous videos. So I'm sort of going to 
run through this a little bit quicker. But the setup, I must plop it down up here. Goes something like this. We're going to start out with a subgeometry node, bringing in a low poly mesh. Then we're running this into a rasterized setup node. We're going to set it to UV space and make sure that we're saving the original position in this attribute right here. Then we're running this into a rasterized geometry node. We're extracting the alpha map, the original P attribute, and the normal attribute. And then we're taking the alpha and using this to fill in all this empty space in our original P attribute and our normal attribute again to get rid of artifacts around the UV islands. And then finally, this can go into a null and I can drop down another fetch node, drag this null in here, hit set outputs from selected corp, and now I have my attributes in here that I can drag way down to my triplanar mapping and write this into the position and the world normal, like this. And as soon as I do so, this is now perfectly aligned to my UV islands, which is exactly what I want. So now in here I have my diffuse, my normal, and my roughness. And I could just wire them directly into a preview material, for example. But again, these are lots of wires and we should be more efficient in here. So let's use another new feature with Copernicus, which is cables. And cables are a way to pack multiple of those single noodles into one big noodle. That is just way easier to modify. For this, let's go with a cable pack. And let's wire in, first of all, our diffuse, then our normal, and then our roughness. And let's also name it accordingly. Let's call the first one diffuse, then normal, and again roughness. And now we have one single cable output. And what I can do now is get a cable unpack, wire this in, set fields from input, and now I have my outputs again, and I can grab another preview material. Also grab my low poly geo from up here and write this into the base color, the normal, and the roughness and see my result here. And now I have a workflow where in between these two nodes, I can do all my maps, all my blending between different PBR maps and just keep this way, way simpler than we had before. And in the end, just split it out again into the right outputs. So to do just that, I want to take this material in here and also mix it with another material, a sort of rock shader, a rock PBR material for these bits of my Detroiter gate. And I just want to bring this in by now because this video is already running fairly long. So this is my rock material in here. Let's go through this. First of all, again, I'm bringing in here a bunch of files, a diffuse map, a normal map and a roughness map, all downloaded from Polyhaven. I'm doing some color correction on my diffuse map and then this goes into a cable pack. And of course, since this is not mapped to our UV coordinates or UV islands, we again should use a triplanar mapping node in here. And this also works with cables. So the same setup as before and now it's actually aligned to our UV islands, which is awesome. However, currently with this output right here, there's one small little bug, which is if I unpack this cable again, my roughness map in here has now turned into an RGB map, which causes some trouble later down the line. So what I found fixes this small bug is to use a cable split node where we split out a roughness map in here, then use an RGB to mono node to actually convert it back to mono, and then use a cable merge set to union to merge it back into our original cable. And now this is fixed. Now this is again a mono map. And I'm sure in some Houdini release down the line, this will be fixed as well. And we don't have to do this little hack right here. But now with our cable in here and in here, we can actually do all our PBR mixing just on these two inputs. And we don't have to build our own assets for this like we had to do last year. So for this, let's use a blend node and let's blend between our Detroit Agate material up here and our rock material down here. And this is already working. If I now scrub between both of my maps, I can blend between them. However, of course, I want to control this with a texture. So for this, what I want to grab is again my fetch node where I fetch my baked textures. Let's just copy this and paste it down here. And what I want to do is I want to grab the distance parameter and run this through a remap to create a mask for this. And I want to do a fairly extreme remapping. So let's put the input min to a value very close to 1.985 and the max also very close to 1, so 0.99, like this. And of course, we should put it into the right input loop. So let's run dist into source like this. And now we have a mask. 
Let's use the remap to turn this into a mask or to use it as a mask. And now we have this right here and we can already get the result and wire this up here into a cable unpack and a preview material and we can take a look at how this looks. And this looks very promising. The only thing that we need to do in here as well is we also have a baked normal and a baked ambient occlusion and we should also implement this into our baked textures in here. So to do that, we're going to use another cable unpack. Let's get rid of this connection right here. And on the cable unpack, what I want to do is I want to take my diffuse map and multiply it with my ambient occlusion map. So that's why our diffuse in here and our AO in here. And I want to take my normal map and run it through a combined normals node in here. So this node right here and our baked normal goes into the first input and our normal maps go into the second input. And now they are combined. So finally, with this done, we can drop down again a cable pack and write in our diffuse color, our normal, and our roughness, which has not changed. And then we can take this, and let's get rid of the parameter window in here. We add this into a preview material. And I think in here we have to set fields from input again. Yep. And now taking a look at this, let's maybe also turn off the wireframe. And yeah, I think we have a pretty great textured asset in here. So you can take the output from this and move on to Karma to render it there, or you can export this as maps. And the workflow in here has not changed much. I'm just going to import it in. So what you can do either is grab the entire cable and run this into one export SOP and export this as an EXR file and hit add AOVs from input in here, which adds all maps that we generated and specify which of these should be raw values and which should run through a color pipeline up here. Or if you want to export JPEGs, the workflow in here is still the old one, I think. So a little more work. We have to create a null for each one of our passes, each one of our textures, so our diffuse. And again, let's hit set fields from input. So again, our diffuse, our normal and our roughness, and then have one rub output node in here for every one of them. But this is it. This is the updated PBR texturing workflow. To quickly run through this again, we have our baking up here. We also have our additional P and normal maps up here that we use for triplanar mapping. And then we have two sets of materials, one Detroit gate and one standard rock material. And then we're just mixing them together, together with our baked maps. And then we have a preview here and our export here. So this is it for today and if you want to help us drop everything we're doing and start recording as soon as a new Houdini version drops, please again consider becoming a patron of ours. With big thanks going out to all our existing patrons. Without you, there would be no Houdini 21 coverage on this channel today. Cheers guys.